Tales from my D&D campaign. Previously. You don't build a trap every ten feet. You build one serious trap. Now equipped with what they assumed to be the badges TR4's head had described, I'll walk over and try to pick up the shield generator one. Is it heavy? It activates the energy shields, and the golems which are all the f*** around you start activating. They're all activating? There, there's no laser beam, right? There's probably no laser, but you may have activated the strategic reserve. They missed all those times. I still took 92 damage. Alright, I'll shoot, little one. You're gonna enjoy that just a little too much. As Angel backs down the passage and fires at him, the half-dragon warblade disappears in a gout of flame. I'll get caught in the teleport damper thing, but I'll, I'll be back in three rounds. Blistering radiance. Raven drops a wall of force, protecting them from the furnace-like glow. Minions never take damage on a successful save, but nevertheless, half of them die in the first round, while it begins to damage the larger constructs. Now we just buff up. And get ready to mop up. A blue glow fills the room, fighting against the radiance. Override. Override. Intruders detected. They all start moving out of the room. I pop back in and see them leaving, and I'm like, Hey, you won! Good job! As the constructs marched out of the security room, the larger golems suffered another round of damage from Black's blistering radiance spell, but protected by some power of Polaron controller, the massive bonus allowed them to pass all their saving throws, the golems taking only half damage, while the remaining minions, who only take damage if they fail a saving throw, were able to skirt by unharmed. Which way are they going? They're splitting up somewhat. Many are heading out through the north door, which you are pretty sure leads back to the major hall you came from, but some are also going into the large doors on the east side. Splitting up is good. Splitting up is a big deal. Won't they come back with reserves? This is the reserve force. This is probably who they would be deploying against us. Yeah. Remind me not to touch things. Ever. I don't know. That's where all the fun comes from. Oh well, it was worth a shot. How awesome would it have been if we could have stolen that guy? TR4's head did warn you. The badges don't make the golems act like morons. Yep, we were warned. At least we proved you can teleport down here. So if you're not going to fight them, you have a good minute to screw off. Why would we leave? We should go in. I don't know if I like going into the room. We had a good choke point here. I could cast Stone Body, and can take a lot of hits, and get low, Graven can cast Transmute Mud to Stone, and in stone form, that full heals me. As opposed to you just casting heal on yourself? But it's cool. So what are you guys going to do? I'll find the path to the main reactor. Find the path is an extremely powerful level 6 divine spell. It's a divination that takes up a spell slot of the same level as heal. For 10 minutes per level, the spell tells me the most direct path to the chosen location. Screw the reactor, find the path to Alpha. It has to be a place, not a person. Right, that's why the main reactor. Why not the controller? That's sort of what I meant. They aren't necessarily in the same place. On reading Find the Path, the one thing you might have a problem with is it always gives the most direct path. It will include stuff like secret doors and how to open them. Wow. But it doesn't factor in safety. That's, That's fine. fine. At all. <laughs> <laughs> I say that because I'm not worried about danger. He says that because he's not in the lead. That's part of it, but also danger equals XP. So what did you decide on? Main power or control room? Control. That's where Alpha's got to be going. Based on previous experience, it's a good guess. Find the Path gives you a sense of where to go, a sense of how to bypass an obstacle when you come up to it, but it doesn't give it all in advance. For now, Black Spell just indicates the most direct path to the control room is through this door, so that's where they go. Once the last construct leaves the room, the blue glow fades. The party enters the space hesitantly, but nothing jumps out. The door's not locked from the inside. I'll take the lead. Can I rig the door to only open from the inside? With my disabled device skill. You may have to do some stuff first, because when you open the door... Two golems, some workers, and a sphere are waiting. After the crap they've been through, and with little one back and healed up, they aren't exactly intimidated by the standard golems. Their only encounter with the sphere thus far was nasty, but also very brief, so they are a little wary of its capabilities. And with good reason. When the sphere attacked, it unfolded into a veritable hurricane of spinning blades. When we talk about a whirlwind attack, we're comparing it to the feat of the same name, which allows a character to replace their normal full attack, where each successive attack has a lower bonus to hit, with one attack against each enemy in range, using their highest attack bonus. 
That can be a very effective move, but has a lot of prerequisites, and can be tricky to hit more than a couple enemies since you generally can't move more than 5 feet before a full round action. Compare this to the Sphere, which had a 10 foot reach and could whirlwind attack as a standard action, allowing it to use all of its movement to get more targets in range. It did a good chunk of damage already, but any hits landed by the Atronium Golems or even the Workers could add Polaron charges to the PCs, which the Sphere's attack would discharge for an extra 5 electrical damage apiece. Man, it's a good thing my 9 charges from a minute ago dissipated since the last fight. At the bottom of the round, initiating energy dispersal. A curtain of blue energy from above washes down upon all of you. You each gain 1d4 Polaron charges. God damn it! We need to stop saying anything. Ever. Especially you. That would probably be wise. Wisdom's not really little one's strong suit, though. The sphere, which the Eternans called a slicing golem, can definitely cause a lot of damage, but overall, this is not even close to the threat level of either fight in the laser room. The slicing golem has the same hit points and damage reduction as the conducting golems, and though it moves around the heroes making no effort to avoid attacks of opportunity, those almost never hit because it rolls around as a solid armor sphere with plus 8 AC. That said, its normal AC, when it's actually fighting, is 4 points lower than those first guys, which means the party's powerful melee can very reliably beat it down and their NPCs have a pretty good chance to contribute their own damage. So they take it out and wreck the rest of the trash, little one showing the Atronium Golems how he feels about the beatdown they gave him earlier, leaving them free to explore a little further. Emerging from security into the east-west tunnel, it's clear that the ramp upward would lead back to the arrow slits and the laser room. They don't know what they'd find if they continued down the tunnel to the west, but Black's find the path tells him that it's the door straight ahead of them which leads most directly to Polaron's control room. The door is locked. <laughs> sure. Angel begins working on the lock, but a yellow light courses around the edges of the door. Due, Due to the ongoing security situation, access to the atrium is currently denied. You find it harder to open than previous doors. Your first attempt fails. Oh yeah? I cast Knock. Knock is a level 2 arcane spell that pops open a chest or blows open a door. In the rules, there are actually a bunch of reasons this wouldn't work. It's not supposed to raise bars or pork glisses. It's limited by the square footage of the door, max 10 square feet per caster level, when this 20 by 15 foot door is more than double that. But the purpose of Knock is to open a locked door. It even suppresses the Arcane Lock spell, which is very similar to the controller's door focus ability. It seemed more fun and better for the narrative to allow Angel to use her spell if she wants to spend that resource, instead of spending 10 minutes to take a 20 on her open locks check. With a loud bang, the energy field is dissipated and the door jolts into action, rising into the ceiling. Beyond it, the tunnel changes into a long, covered bridge of blue metal extending over a vast, deep chamber. A space shaped much like the main area of Ginneron, but doubled in every dimension. And instead of water, it's lava. Wow. I feel like we should have predicted this. If it's underground, wouldn't it be magma? Why don't you go ask it? How hot is it in here? Seems fine. Unlike Ginneron's open bridges, Polaron's walkways were covered and seemed to have some kind of intangible field between the top and bottom which blocked the heat, because the 20 foot wide troughs of lava around every level of the atrium should have turned this enclosed space into an oven. Surroundings aside though, there was another group of defenders approaching across the bridge. A couple more standard Etronian golems, a few workers, and something new, with another sphere close behind. The new type was covered in ice. Superficially, it looked like a big block, but it can't have been all one piece because it still had the range of motion to stomp towards them. The heroes still had some serious buffs they'd cast while waiting for the blistering radiance to expire. Zamora and Draven each recast something short term before the two groups collided. Make a spot check. I get 35. Nope. However, Little One does see something on the ceiling of the bridge, an invisible blue metal hemisphere four feet across, creeping steadily above the combat patrol. An invisible shield generator? On the ceiling? Those dicks! Wow, that's... If Little One didn't see Invis, that could have completely screwed us. But Demonac knows Little One has see Invis all the time. I knew that. The Atarans didn't. Seemed like an awesome idea to them. Little One searing charges the invisible shield drone, and combined with a hasted volley of Draven's construct baned crossbow bolts, they drop the force field generator in record time, and the others hold their actions until its initiative passes and the shields go away. I hit the ice guy. What AC? What? Like 37. 
That's a miss. That's a miss? Your blow can't penetrate the armor through all that ablative ice, just chipping off a bit, leaving a web of cracks which start slowly freezing over. On its turn, it raises its arm and projects a cone of gold. Gah! Does that reach me way back here? Sixty foot cone. Gah! The walkway and all the heroes are blasted with ice, while the edges of the cone blasting out to either side of the bridge instantly sublimate into steam. It's an 11d6 cone, so not as powerful as the photonic lightning cannon, but it hits everyone but Angel for an unpleasant amount of damage. Liz and Angel got to work on the lesser enemies, where they felt they could do the most good, but then the sphere plowed through the whole group with an overrun attack. Anyone with a melee weapon got an attack of opportunity, but of course with plus 8 AC while moving, they all bounced off. Now, when an enemy tries to pass through your space with overrun, you can either avoid it or try to stop its advance. Liz tries to block it, but is bowled over and knocked prone, though fortunately overrun takes a standard action, so the slicing golem can get behind them but can't attack in the same turn. Raven hits the big one back with an orb of force, which bypasses the icy armor and does solid damage, but doesn't chip away any of the ice either. Its AC only goes down when you miss, and actually on its turn, it regrew two ice points, so four AC. Back up to almost max. Huh. Ice things can either be strong against fire or weak against fire. True. It's very hard to metagame. Well, I'm gonna find out. I'll see Ring Flame at full attack with 3d6 plus 12 fire damage per hit. It's very fire resistant. This is actually the fire suppression system. The fire suppression system has a decent base AC of 26, but it builds up an icy shell based on shaped growth patterns, carefully engineered to form three-dimensional structures which preserve joint movement. It gains two ice points per round, gaining plus two AC and fire resistance five per ice point until it reaches a maximum of seven points for plus 14 AC and 35 fire resistance. It loses one ice point each time an attack against it misses, but it doesn't take much for it to build up or retain 10 or more fire resistance. Are we getting combed again? No, it appears to have a cooldown. The Golem's Ice Saber does quite a lot of damage and has good enough to hit to reliably land one or two of its three attacks per round. Meanwhile, they've inflicted some damage on the sphere behind them, but it has most of them somewhat pinned down because it has combat reflexes giving it multiple attacks of opportunity if anyone should move away. Now it whirlwind attacks again, hitting most of them for a pile more damage, though at least they have very few Polaron charges for it to explode. Still, by now they have attacked and missed the fire suppression system enough to knock off most of its ice, so that now most of their attacks are hitting it, and the couple of misses which naturally occur just help knock it back down to its minimum armor class each round. This means that even though they inflicted hardly any damage on the icy golem at the beginning, by the third round they were beating the crap out of it. The party managed to destroy that thing before its fourth turn, when its cone of cold would have been ready to cast again, and the battle was over not long after that. So much healing. Could have been a lot worse. If we had to fight them for multiple rounds of shields before we could find the invisible generator, could have been worse, says the guy who kept out of melee the whole time. Exactly. Black, you notice a problem though. A problem? Without the fight to distract you, your Find the Path spell becomes top of mind for a moment, and you realize that it's telling you the most direct path to the control room is to jump off the bridge near the far end. Jump off? Like, into the lava? Not directly into the lava, but pretty close, and more than 300 feet down. He said it doesn't care about safety. I wonder how bad it is out there. I'll stick my finger out the side of the bridge. Okay, you take six damage. For a finger? It's hot. It's like a kiln, with only a thin energy shield between you and temperatures that could spontaneously ignite human hair. What about half-dragon hair? I think you'll be fine. Don't we still have endure elements from when we were on the subway? That only protects up to 60 Celsius, the kind of temperatures that can occur in places where humans on Earth actually live. So we don't want to fly down or something. If we follow the halls for a ways, I bet the most direct path will change. At the very least, we have a pretty good idea where the objective is. Maybe we'll find a better shortcut further down. Stepping over the smashed golems, they cross the bridge back into the tunnels around the exterior of the atrium. Passing another large door, they find a tunnel extending both east and west, and straight ahead is a door that leads into the living quarters of the Ataran personnel who once worked and researched in Polaron. Though the apartments are more spacious, with much more extensive lounge areas than Ginneron, the story is similar. The inhabitants had plenty of time to leave, 
taking their possessions with them and leaving little except some murals, painted in the Ataran 2D style, and smashed and cracked almost beyond recognition by hard, powerful fists. And they find a damaged golem face down in some kind of pool or fountain. So Alpha has been in here. I'll say. But it seems so irrational. Emotional. He's usually more... Emotionless. Emotionless my ass. Oh, he wants us to think that. But that guy is all pride and taunting. He's terrified of dying. He's a total fake who starts shit and runs away. Huh, that's true. I'm still not sure this was him. They do a lot of exploring. Polaron's layout, different but obviously similar to that of Gineron, is mainly a linear path of tunnels through the stone and ramps downward, periodically crisscrossing the cavernous, lava-bounded space of the atrium. Along the path there are numerous laboratories, all more or less cleaned out. Some have bits of equipment, wall and floor and ceiling hookups, all fragments of ancient Magitek Draven could spend days studying, but nothing of immediate interest or of noteworthy loot value. Down two levels, crossing perpendicular to the top bridge, then again parallel to it, they encounter no resistance for some time. The only signs of life are those odd flying golems dutifully stirring or sifting the troughs of lava. But then, as they round the bend approaching the next bridge, they spot an Itar and sign. They see these from time to time, labeling various rooms, but despite the time Draven spent with GE7 translating old tomes, none of them reads Ataran at a glance, not without spending a little time to translate or casting comprehend languages. But this is one word Draven does immediately recognize. Library. Yes. No! It's no surprise that the library's shelves would be empty or covered in the dust of long desiccated books, but a couple of bookcases have collapsed down into a gaping hole in the floor. The room is hot, and peering down, they're confronted with a painful curtain of superheated air. The chamber below, which looks like a second hidden library, appears to have suffered some breach, allowing molten magma to flood the lower level, with one of those hover drones crashed in the midst of it. What the hell happened? Alpha. He knows you like libraries. He was Temple One. Unwilling to give up, they searched desperately for anything that could be saved. Angel found the secret staircase down, not that it helped. They cast a fire resistance spell on her, and she spider climbed around the ceiling, searching for any other secrets, but if there had been any old preserved tomes, like that secret compartment they'd found in Ginneron, they had been plundered already or buried in orange hot molten rock. All right, let's go kill him. Across the next bridge, they run into another group of defenders. This time, they're caught in something of a pincer maneuver, where the golems engage them in the corner to attack from both sides, and the reach makes it tricky for the less agile party members to disengage back to a better choke point. But there are no new enemy types here, and they're handling it just fine when one of the hover drones from up above flies down across the void of the atrium. Okay. W wait, have we seen any of them do that? No, it's definitely different behavior, as is the psionic power it casts on you guys. Alpha. This mysterious misbehaving magma sifter, Alpha, hits Angel, Black, and Little One with a will save. DC 19. Gah! Yeah, gah. I saved. Saved. I failed, but I'm gonna use the moment of perfect mind maneuver to re-roll. I passed! Okay, since you all saved for half, you only get minus two to hit from Inflict Pain instead of minus four. That's it. I wouldn't have spent the maneuver on that. I thought he was going to mind control us. Even if you happen to be looking that way, instead of at the array of large machines attempting to cut you, you don't have spellcraft. You just feel the attack on your mind and react accordingly. Draven could identify it being cast, and Angel has a good chance to, but they can't tell you faster than it can hit you. So I have minus two on all my attacks, even though I saved? It's one of my favorite psionic powers, and it's only level two. You said that before. Probably. Problem solving really isn't your strong suit. Have you ever found a wall you didn't bash your heads against? The Dark Ancient, however, didn't stick around and join the fight. Next turn it continued flying down past them to a lower level, and even Little One wasn't quite ready to tumble out of the current fight in order to searing charge something that was certainly fire immune while it hovered outside of the heat shielding over a lake of molten lava. So the suspicious psionic sifter dived out of view below the bridge as the adventurers focused on destroying the golems in front of them, and after the fight, they saw no hint of the errant aerial drone. 
Black had been checking find the path as they went, it lasted like two hours, but whenever they crossed the atrium, it always pointed dangerously down into the north. The rest of the time, it tended to suggest the tunnels they were following, and as of yet, no secret door or other shortcut, other than jumping across the lava. The large two-entrance room from which the golems had ambushed them was the first one they'd found which was full of untouched equipment. Draven poured over it and quickly determined that a small section of it was very similar to the water purification room from Ginneron. The rest was quite different, but there were some echoes of the same... It's almost like a purification system for the lava. Let me guess, you want to smash it? No, my default is not to smash anything full of lava. I want to believe that. They fought through a hell of a lot of gold, so they decide to rest and regain spells, opening up an invisible rope trick portal near the ceiling where they could peer down upon the intersection between the bridge and the two entrances of purification, giving them sightlines through a good part of the atrium and also partway down the ramp. These golems really aren't very good at security. So I'm worried about Rainbow Dash up there. Can we just teleport her back to Vistria? We have an eye. You can't teleport something away from you. Somebody would have to go along, and if they're going to come back, that would take two eyes. Doing that link thing. Right. I don't think we can justify spending Eldritch Eyes to send her away. Laura can cast teleport if she has to. Yeah, but she's a good caster. We can still use her. Why can't we use Rainbow Dash anyway? She can trample all the little bots. She couldn't fit down the one set of stairs. She couldn't fit down the way you went, down the back way to the security room, but the main hallway was golem size. There was plenty of space. Oh, that's right. Well then why did we... The hell? That's it. I'm going to get Rainbow Dash. We still need to rest and regain spells. You guys do that. I'm getting my mount back. I'll go with them. That's still splitting the party. You need spells? I need Rainbow Dash. We'll be fine. So they are dead. Little One and Angel make their way back up the path, up the bridges, saving the gnomes' invisibility and silence abilities in case they need to avoid trouble. But though they watch the hovering magma sifters with a lot more suspicion now, they get back to the site of the bridge battle without trouble. You notice there should be more golem bodies than you are seeing here. They're being repaired. Notably, the fire suppression one is gone, as is half of the body of the round slicing golem. Ah, that's bullshit. Check the other half down the f lava. No, no. When we take over this place, we'll have a golem army. Yeah, that said, there's something to be said for delaying them. Don't throw them in the lava, but we could always smash them up a bit more. Although, you guys don't want to create any noise right now. Not while we're split up. Given the amount of trouble they've had in this area, Angel casts invisibility on the two of them, and they pass through the door towards the entrance of security. From here, the leveled off tunnel segment with the arrow slits obstructs the view up the tunnel to the laser room, but it's pretty clear this main tunnel must indeed join up with the spot where they left Rainbow Dash. So they head back up to that spot... Damn it! Son of a- There's no body either, so that's good news. Did you forget where you parked? Where the hell's my horse? They quickly look all around the laser room, where the cannon is still walled off, as well as the entryway and temple, Angel even running up the wall for a quick check outside, though there should really be no way Rainbow Dash could get up there on her own. They find no sign of her though, and most of the smashed golem and worker bodies are still there. If they killed- if they hurt Rainbow Dash? Are there any tracks? It's a pretty heavy duty haul. The golems don't scuff it up. Do you have any tracking ability? I have a scent stance. The scent ability alone, without the track feet, doesn't automatically let you follow a trail, but this isn't a trackless jungle or a wide open plain. There are only a few straight tunnels in this part of the facility. Angel definitely finds Rainbow's scent here, and by trial and error, they quickly determine that scent is present at the door to security, but not further down the tunnel, nor back towards the bridges of the atrium. Rainbow Dash has a distinctive scent. Smells strongly, of course, but a little spicy. A little something on the side, a little dash. Angel had done a quick job rigging the door, trying to jam it. It still shows signs of your tampering, but it has been repaired enough to open. Damn, they work fast. So, you going to reopen the door to security? Yeah, I guess. This is the big security room where I tried to grab the ball. Didn't go so well, but we've got eight hours before the others have their spells back. There's definitely less junk in here than before, but there are a dozen workers. Any balls? No, no slicing golems, and you don't see any shield domes either, but three of the regular golems. As long as they don't attack us, we don't attack them. 
Are they attacking? No, they're not moving. I learned my lesson. Don't touch anything in this room. Nothing tries to kill you, theoretically. And the scent? Rainbow Dash had definitely been in the room. From here, there was a small door on each side, including the western one they had entered from before, but the huge mount clearly wouldn't fit through them. That left two more large doors on the eastern side of the security chamber. We'll try one of those. This door isn't being nice in opening. I'll open it. When she tricks the 20 foot wide door into sliding upward, they indeed find Rainbow Dash, but she's being pinned to the wall by the gentle but unwavering application of the monolithic shields of two conducting bulbs. As soon as we see her in here, we should shut the door, lock it, get help. The first thing we should do is get on Rainbow Dash and ride her back to the others. The two golems are facing away, but Rainbow Dash can smell the guys and is getting a little excited. Moving into the room, Angel shuts the door and starts trying to disable it. If you want it disabled such that you can open it, but hopefully they won't be able to easily override it, it's going to take time, like a minute. You can take minus 20 to do it much faster, but based on your experience so far, you're very unlikely to succeed with minus 20. Yeah, no. While she's doing that, I activate my ring of armor. If you had someone to help you, you'd have enough time to put your armor on properly. So while little one waits patiently, Angel sets the door not to open in such a way that she can reverse it quickly, but she's pretty sure it could still be overridden somehow. She figures she can sort that out in another round or so when that yellow energy floods down around the borders of the door. Intruder alert. Intruder alert. The golems are alerted, but looking around, they can't actually see the invisible intruders. So it's Rainbow Dash who, sensing the change in the situation, acts first. Her kick-kick-bite attack routine only hits once though, and the golem resists most of the 15 damage. I've got to teach her Elder Mountain Hammer. That's probably a little beyond, but if I get her to the Helm of Intelligence, can I teach her, like, level 1 stuff? Presumably. There's time investment and such, but cool. Angel zips around behind them and readies her action for Little One's opener, but as he breaks in Viz, he misses his Elder Mountain Hammer, then goes on to miss two out of three attacks with Searing Blade in the next round. Angel tries to get one of the golems out of the way using the low-level, non-damaging version of Little One's throw maneuver, but despite the bonuses she gets, the golem wins the roll and her attacks the next round miss as well. They have AC 32? These guys are a higher priority on the repair list. Rainbow Dash isn't having much better luck, only getting another 2 damage past their damage reduction of 10. Meanwhile, the golems are hitting them back reliably, which is reasonable based on their stats, but also score 2 crits on Little One while knocking both of them around the room with their free bull rush on hit. Fortunately, they don't have a death laser to knock you into. Not a very auspicious start. You two can't die, because me and Draven already discussed that. Yes, it would be really inconvenient, because we wouldn't even know you were dead. How long do we wait? I told you before we went, if we aren't back in 8 hours, assume we're dead. Rainbow Dash tries a bull rush of her own to get out from against the wall, but she rolls a 1. On the plus side, They've shown no sign of attacking her yet, even though she has dealt some damage. You need to turn invisible and get out of here. They're not going to hurt Rainbow Dash. They're going to hurt me! That's what I'm saying. Get out. I can jump on the roof and run. They can reach the roof. I'll tumble on the roof. No, just cast and fizz and get away. I've got a plan. Don't worry, guys. Alright, I trust you. I've still got 100 hit points. I have 80. Don't get me wrong, it's getting hairy, but I have a couple tricks up my sleeve. That's when the door opens, and suddenly the fight includes three more golems and a dozen and workers. Angel bolts out along the ceiling, as he'd asked, but this is what Little One was waiting for. Now I can ballista throw one of these shield guys into the others and ride Rainbow Dash through the lot of them. <laughs> Damn it, why can't you just give me my horse back? Can't you tumble through? I could manage, but that's another 30 some damage, and they're gonna do some damage on the way out and. So he ballista throws one of the regular golems to clear a path, taking out two thirds of the workers then tumbles and moves after it, barely making his tumbling checks despite how easy those checks should be for him. Try to stay within 30 feet of me. The remaining golems keep after him, but as long as they move more than 5 feet, they only get one attack per round instead of two. The conducting golems, the ones with the big shields, don't leave the room, focusing on holding back Rainbow Dash, who is rearing to follow. One of the surviving stabby workers gets lucky and hits the little one for another 9 damage at a charge, while Angel skitters down the wall to the gnome height control and opens the outer door, and little one attacks the nearest golem with the rallying strike maneuver to heal him and Angel for 3d6 plus his initiator level each, but misses by one. God damn it, I just want my f***ing horse. I'll kill you all. I'm getting a little salty. 
minions shoot little one for even more charges, but all the golems manage to miss him this time, and there doesn't seem to be anything around that can expend the charges. Little one runs through the door just as it closes again, and I jump and mountain hammer my sword into the door to jam it, trying to bang it out of shape a bit, or actually leaving your sword in there. Yeah, leaving it. We can recover it when we come back for Rainbow Dash. The sword from Marp? Hey, I love that sword, but it's not my primary weapon anymore. It'll still be here. Damn it! all I wanted was to get the f***ing horse. Didn't want to fight these guys again, but they were just lacing into me. You did walk into security again. Yeah, but I didn't want to fight them, just wanted to throw one out. You took out a bunch of the small ones. Whoa, that'll show them. They'll be back in action in like minutes. Weren't you just mocking the security effectiveness of golems a minute ago? I do recall that. Well, yeah, when we fight them as a team, they kept going, dashing down the hall toward the atrium, but already Angel spots a couple workers squeezing under the jammed door behind them, moving up the wall to try and repair it. Smash, smash. This is as you're leaving. You're going back for that? Err, all right. They're going to take your sword. I'll get it back. You realize everything that moves in this place is going to die. The only person who has a problem with that is Probably Draven. I'm gonna melt down this whole place if I can. Let's just take over the whole place so that we order around the robots. Problem solved. Well, you guys should be able to get back to the other safely as long as you exercise caution. Yeah, we don't want to fight anything. Angel exercises caution by accident. So you return to the portal, beaten and bloody, climbing up the rope they let down. Alright, we found the horse. Rescue didn't go so well. They haven't even settled into bed yet. I'm still nursing my cocoa. This time the whole party holds up as they complete an 8 hour rest to regain all their spells so they can heal and buff and set out again at their full fighting strength. Those without spells split the watches, but the only event was when one of the sphere golems rolled past beneath them and swiftly down the ramp. For all we know, that could have been Alpha that just rolled down the hall. Could have been. I'm going to have to cast Find the Path again. Not necessarily. We clearly know where the control room is. That hasn't changed as we've worked our way around. Unless you think there might be more information, secret doors or whatever, those level 6 cleric castings are really valuable. Right. So, where do you guys want to go? Follow the sphere? We're going to get f***ing Rainbow Dash! Oh right, they still have her. Those golems have a lot of practice beating your ass. They are gonna level up. I don't think it works that way. They learn Bane half dragons. The atrium remained a gigantic chamber, ringed by wide troughs of molten rock at every level, but by now they're used to it. Like. Eh, whatever. Is my sword in a door anymore? Nope. There's still some damage where it had been. It hasn't been repaired that much, but they removed the sword and cut off any twisted metal that was stopping it from opening. Draven casts Bane Construct on all their important weapons, and Angel opens the now familiar door, and finds the main room of security empty. Kinda thought that would happen. Well, Rainbow Dash was in a side room. In there, they find only one golem guarding Rainbow Dash, who has now been chained up. Not tight or cruel chains, but she doesn't have enough slack to fight back anymore. But they've been feeding her, or at least giving her water. They tried giving her electricity, but she didn't like it. Alpha strike this mother. Angel and Little One could have easily handled a single golem. With the whole extended party, they make short work of it, especially as Little One lands Elder Mountain Hammer with crazy damage roll of 56. What if you do Newborn Mountain Hammer? Just does one damage, but ignores DR. Is my sword in here? Actually, it is. I pick it up and hack the chains apart. I already unlocked them. I hack the chains apart after she undoes them all like a ninja. Then I walk over to the golem and shove the chains up its ass. And if it doesn't have an ass, I make it one. So Little One makes it an ass. Just carves out an ass. Alright, Kendall, you and the chains are getting married. They feed Rainbow Dash, who seemed pretty hungry. There's an outside chance there isn't any food around here, though she had been given water. Metabolically, she could go like three weeks without food before it became a real problem, if she had to. But they didn't kill the horse, they actually wanted to save the horse. Well, we know Etarns liked knowledge and shit. The controller was probably like, We'll hold this specimen until somebody comes along to study it. Just keep her till she starves. Maybe they'd have eventually built a machine to make food? Who knows? You aren't sure how much ability this place has to make new stuff. They head back down, past the living quarters, past the library, past the empty boring labs, and they are still not inclined to investigate the steam pipe lava pipe room. They continue on down the ramp, but shortly after turning the corner, Angel notices a secret door facing away from the atrium. Some effort has gone into hiding it, but between how skilled you are in general and the amount of experience you are getting with the way these guys hide doors... Yep, there's something here. With Mora dedicated to just watching up the ramp so they don't get bowled by a slicing golem, 
our Whisper Gnome finds no traps on a modified roll of 36. So she proceeds to open the door. Okay, make a reflex save. Really? Yep, Angel, make a reflex save. 23? You almost drop your lockpick, but you manage to hide it from the rest of them. Wait, so there's no trap? You don't see anything. Behind the door is... another door. No, I'm not kidding. This door is much less hidden. It looks like a very heavy-duty gate with red and yellow hazard stripes. That's not good. Next time on Tales from My D&D Campaign. Alpha strike this mother. I'll tumble across the ceiling to flank it. Angel does the exorcist crab roll on the ceiling. Do not do that. I will kill you. You know what Angel needs to complete her persona? Become a vampire. <laughs> Let's make a deal. If one of us becomes a vampire, you have to bite the rest of us. I don't want to be a vampire. Okay, you can be our thrall then.